All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I'm really excited about this new series. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about this morning is being a doer of the word. And I have preached on this before, but I'm going to add some new information um, and probably say some things in a different way that I'm believing will uh, bring new revelation to you about what it really means to be a doer of the word. Because I think we all have our misconceptions of that. Mm -hmm. And what God wants to do is he wants to bring out the truth and what it really means to be a doer of God's word. Because there's some things that we do in the world, right, that we do secularly, that we've actually brought into the church that have hindered us from being true doers of the word. So God's going to bust that open today, right? Amen. And, and I say this is a really good series because this was hitting my buttons. <laughs> Because it's so easy to be deceived. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's go over to 1 John, uh, not 1 John, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And we're going to, this is going to be our text for this series. And we're going to start in verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. I'll be reading out of King James unless I say otherwise. So James chapter 1 verse 22 says, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Mm -hmm. So we can see here that the problem with hearing is what? The problem of only hearing is what? You deceive yourselves. But... What's the problem with hearing, though? Because it says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So what's the problem with hearing? Very simple. It's not a trick question. It's not about, you know, yes, there's the deceiving. But what's the problem with hearing? What brings about the deceit? When you don't do. When you don't do. Exactly. When you don't do, that's what brings the deception. Okay? Because... The result of not doing is deceiving who? Yourself. Yourself. Who does the deceiving? We do. You do. So you can't blame this on somebody else. You can't blame this on something else. Who does the deceiving? We do. We do. We do. Right? That's a little sobering. Because you can't blame anybody else. Right? So who's supposed to be a doer? We are. We are. We are. Okay? All right. And so let's keep reading verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. Verse 24. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Right? Now in the past I've talked about, you know, the, the word of God is a mirror, and it mirrors back who we are in Christ, okay? But what I want to focus on here is in order to be a doer, what do you have to do? What is this scripture saying here, those two scriptures? Apply what you're hearing. No? Yes, that's, that's it. But what do you have to do in order to apply it? This is real simple. Get in the word. No? That's part of it. You have to remember. remember. That, that's it. You have to remember what you heard. And that sounds so simple, right? Sounds so simple. Yet, how many of you are truly remembering the word of the Lord? When you come into a church service, let's just use the church service as an example. When you come into a church service and, you know, I mean, just revelation is spitting out and it's like, wow, wow, yeah, and God is speaking to you, and you go, I am never going to forget that. Mm -hmm. What happens when you walk out this door? You forget, you forget it. it. It's forgotten. And why? Because you didn't write it down. Yeah, a lot of times we don't write it down. We deceive ourselves into thinking that is life-changing revelation. 
I'm never going to forget it. But we don't realize that there is an enemy, there is the devil, and he's coming to steal the word. And how he steals that word is bringing distraction. Because we can get good revelation in the church, in the church service, right? You get good revelation listening to teaching at home. You can get good revelation praying, but if we don't make the effort to truly write it down or put it on your phone or record it somewhere so you can bring it back to your remembrance, what are the odds that you're going to do it? Zero. <laughs> yeah, but pretty much zero. zero. Zero to none, you know. I mean, maybe there's a few things that we remember, so but probably about, you know, just to be generous, maybe 10 or 15 percent. Just to be real generous. We remember those things, right? This is why confession is so important because it brings to your remembrance what we are supposed to do. You know, Steve had a great testimony about work and getting into that confrontation with, you know, pretty much his boss, you know, because um, he's a subcontractor. And, but because he was doing those love scriptures, the Holy Spirit brought it back to his remembrance. I am not supposed to get into confrontation. So I'm going to choose to humble myself. Amen. And that changed the situation. Yep. Right? See, this is why it's so important that we do those confessions because it brings it to our remembrance. The Holy Spirit's your partner. He wants to help you do the word. So, but we've got to put it in ourselves. We've got to put it in our mind. We've got to put it in our heart. We've got to put it in front of us so that we can remember to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. See, if you forget it, are you going to do it? Mm -hmm. no. 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 This is why we, everybody has, like, the world, you have your checklist, you have your to-do list, you have your shopping list, so you don't forget. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I mean, how many of you have gone to the store and you've forgotten your, to, you know, your yeah. grocery list? You've gone to the store, you get everything that you think you've remembered, and then you get home and you're like, oh, I forgot the toilet paper. <laughs> Man, the one, the most important thing in the house, the toilet paper, <laughs> and it's forgotten. <laughs> because we forgot to put it on the list, or we forgot the list entirely, and we're going based on memory. One of the reasons why God's word is so precious and we want to make sure that we are putting it in our remembrance, that we're writing it down, that, you know, we're going back and we're listening to these services again. You know, I'd be like, well, I, I was there. I know it. We're going to get into that a little bit more, but just listening to something one time doesn't mean you've got it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that you know it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right? If we think... Because something is so good that we're not going to forget it, we're living in the flesh. Because we are going to forget it. Yeah. And that's just a fact of life. Because there's a lot of pressure that is in this world. There's a lot of distraction that's coming. See, in the church service, you're kind of like really isolated and there's anointing here and you're able to focus on what the, you know, the Lord is saying and it's like, yeah, this is really good. And if your heart is open, okay, because it's all about attitude, if your heart is open to what the Lord wants to reveal to you, I mean, yeah, how many of you have like, wow, that was so good, that was really good, you know, yeah, and then you walk out this door doorway, you go get your kids, <laughs> and then they want to go to McDonald's, you're not going to McDonald's, they start throwing a fit, and you're like, why are you throwing a fit, come on, get in the car, get your shoes on, where's your coat, where's your coat, we had your coat, I can't, where's your coat, Where, where's your other shoe, you had your shoes on, where did your other shoe go, come on, I mean, all these distractions, and you get finally in the car, and you go, okay. Oh, God, what was that, Lord? That was so good. Why can't I remember it? Because we got so distracted. We got so distracted. And this is why we have to come with, with an attitude of expecting, but also treating the word like precious 
pearls. Yes, amen. You know, women know this a little bit more than men because we love jewelry. <laughs> and we love real jewelry. You know, we'll, we'll wear the fake stuff, but, you know, the real jewelry is that little Tiffany box. You know, because the smaller the box, the greater it is. <laughs> men, it's like the bigger the box, the greater it is. Yeah. You know, for women, it's that little Tiffany box that's like, oh, there's a huge treasure in there. You know, diamonds and rubies and sapphires and all that. And how, how do you treat the real stuff compared to the fake stuff? You treat the real stuff much better. You put it in the jewelry box. You don't just throw it on the dresser. Right? We have quite a few women that are married here. And, you know, your husbands are giving you your engagement ring. You know, it's a diamond. You know, for some of you, it's real. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real diamond. It's a real set. You don't just throw that around, do you? Mm -hmm. No, you, you prize it. Mm -hmm. you, you are deliberate. When you take it off, you're deliberate, and you put it in the same place every night, right? Mm -hmm. You yeah. kind of tuck it into bed mm -hmm. because it better be there in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you don't treat it as junk. But that is the word of God. We can't treat it like junk. We have to prize it. Yeah. We have to keep it in our remembrance. We have to make it a priority in our life because it is treasure. And that's part of being a doer of the, good, of the word is making sure that the word of God is a priority, that we're prizing it so, and putting it before us. This is why your confessions are so important. This is why, you know, writing it down and going back over it. Not just saying, wow, I took like eight pages of note at church service and then never looking at it again. Because how many have done that? Amen. You know, we take a lot of good notes. Woo, yeah, that was, really, ooh, that was really good. Say that again, Pastor. Woo, that's good. We're writing it down and writing it down. But then we don't look at it again. Is that prizing it? No. Is that putting it before us again? No. No, it's not. And then how can you remember it? And if we can't remember it, then how can we be a doer of it? Yep. See how it's just like this real, this real simple things can hinder us being a doer of the work. Yep. Right? You won't do what you forget. You can write that down. <laughs> you won't do what you forget. All right, let's read verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, right? And continuing means remembering it. Remembering it and then doing it, okay? Continuing he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Right? So when we remember the word of the Lord and we do it, that's going to equal blessings and results. Who gets results? We do. No? Who gets results? The doer. The doer. The doer gets results. The doer gets results. Go over to Hezekiah 33. Hezekiah 33. Chapter 33. And we're going to read... Thirty-three, thirty-two. All right, Hezekiah, verse thir uh, chapter 33, 30. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak to one another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. Verse 31. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as many people, and they hear thy words, but they do them. They will not do them. You see that? Yep. 
but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they, they, they do them not. You see this? This is what's happening today in many churches. People are coming, right? They are coming, they're hearing, but they're not doing, right? We live in an entertainment society where we have the theater, we have the movies, we have the symphony, we have our TVs and our phones. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in Ezekiel. Yeah. Ezekiel 33. Sorry. You guys are all looking at me weird, and I'm like, did I say the wrong thing? Ezekiel 33. Right? Ezekiel 33, 30 through 32. All right. So, Ezekiel 33, verse 30 through 32. Right? So we see that these people are coming, they're talking, but they're not doing. Right? And, and we see that here today. And this is the deception. Right? This is the deception that we fall into. People think that they have done something when they come and hear. You have not done anything. You have seen other people do things. When you go to the movie theater, you have not done anything. You have seen people do things on screen. But just because you go and you hear and you watch and then you leave, that doesn't mean that you have done. And see, this is the deception that we bring into the church. We think that because we got up, we got dressed, we combed our hair, we sat down, we praised the Lord, we raised our hands a little bit, we may have wrote something down that we've done. We have not done anything yet. The doing comes after you hear. What your response is after you hear is going to determine whether you are a hearer only or if you're going to be a doer of what you just heard. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Let's read it. Ezekiel. <laughs> Let's read it one more time. All right. Ezekiel 33, verse 30. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. Ezekiel 33, 30 through 32. Okay? So it's not just coming and hearing that makes you a doer of the word. That's the easy part, coming and hearing. But it's what you hear and what you do after you heard that's going to determine whether you're a doer of the word or not. Amen. This is why you've got to remember what you heard so you can do it. But we can't be deceived into thinking that just showing up to church and hearing the word means that we are a doer. 
No, that's to assist you, to help you. Like I said before, church is school. And so church helps us um, find out what the word of God is saying, what we're supposed to be doing in our lives, how we're supposed to be putting this into practice in our lives. But I can't do it for you. That's right. right. I can't pray, you know, for you in your specific situation. I can pray for you, but I can't do your praying. Mm-hmm. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Because you know? a lot of times we think that, well, you know, I go to a good church or I have a really good pastor. I'll be okay. No, you won't. Because if you're not doing what the word of God has said, what God has told you specifically, you won't get results. You won't get results. So we have to do more than just come and listen. We got to come, listen, and then determine in our hearts that we're going to do what we heard. That's being a doer of the word, that last step right there. You get it? Amen. Some of y'all are looking at me like, what? (laughs) Well, because we've deceived ourselves into thinking that, you know, oh, if I go to a play, I've done something. Let's do something tonight. Let's go to the movies. That's not doing anything. Watching TV, that's not doing anything. You're watching other people do things. But we think we have done something. No, we haven't. That's a spirit of entertainment. And that spirit of entertainment has crept into the church. Because if we make, ooh, if we make it the church, you know, really entertaining, then people will come. That's not our job. Our job is to make doers of the word. Amen. The smoke machine and having Jesus, word Jesus, spin around on the wall isn't making doers of the word. <laughs> Amen. Right? Amen. I went to a church where they had all of that, and it was like, I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> a little different. <laughs> but see, we've allowed that, that spirit of entertainment to creep into the church thinking that just coming, just listening is good enough. No, it's not. This is why people are frustrated. This is why people you know, fall into doubt and unbelief because they think that just attending church is good enough. No, that's the start. You've got to come to church. God, the Bible says don't forsake the assemblings of each other. So we have to come to church. If you're a believer, you need to go to church. Because <laughs> you know? it's not just about you. Well, I just don't feel loved and accepted there. Well, did you love and accept other people? Mm-hmm. Are you being a doer of the word or is it all about you? Right? God spoke a lot about that mm-hmm. last Sunday. Enough of that. <laughs> You're right. And so we've got to do more than just hear the word. We've got to hear the word and then put into practice what we've heard. Mm-hmm. That putting it into practice, what you heard, that is then being a doer of the word. The next thing that we deceive ourselves into is talking. We think talking about it is doing it. Even the media gets into this. Oh, they've talked about this. They've said this and they've said that. But they didn't do it. (gasps) But they still talked about it. But they didn't do it. But they still talked about it. Talking about something and doing something are two different things. That's right. You see that? Yeah. Talking about, well, I have to do my confessions. I got to do my confessions. I need to do my confessions. Have you done your confessions? Have you done your confessions? If you said all of that, have you done your confessions? When you say, I got to do my confessions. Oh, I really need to do my confession. Yeah, I know it's really important to do confessions. I really should get on that. I really should do that. Have you done it? No. No, you haven't done it yet. You've just talked about it. And yet we think talking about it is doing it because we've deceived ourselves. Well, if I talk about it enough, then I've done it, and then that's okay. No, you've just talked about it. Talking about what you're going to do is still not doing. That's right. 
Let me say that again. Amen. Talking about what you're going to do is still not doing. That's right. Amen. Do you see that? Uh -huh. You haven't done it until what? You do it. You do it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really simple, but I mean, a lot of us have fallen into this. Oh, yeah. I, I'm right there with you. Yeah. We think talking about it, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. This is what. Okay, well, that's great, but you're just blah, 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 blahing, and you haven't done it yet. That's right. And there is a part like, yeah, we do need to talk about it. We do need to say, but then there comes a point where you just need to do it. Yeah. yeah. There's just so much talking you can do about something until there's just that decision. Okay, now you got to do it. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, look, take a couple, for example. And the guy, he's like, yeah, I really want to marry her. You know, I think she's the one. I just, you know, really feel it. And so I'm, I'm going to ask her. Yeah, I'm going to ask her. Yeah, I think this is no, that's the right decision. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Has he done it? No, nope. <laughs> he hasn't done it yet. And you go the next week. So, uh, what's going on? You know, I, yeah, no, I, I know she's the one, and I'm gonna ask her. But okay, have you gotten a ring yet? No, no, not yet. But but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I, I know I need to do it because you know I can't let this one get away. Right? Has he done it? Uh, no. No, he hasn't done it yet. <laughs> the next month. Oh, so like. Have, have you asked her? No, not yet, but I know I need to do it. I know I got to go out and, and get the ring and get, talking, just talking about it, not really having done it. But we think talking about it is better because, well, at least I'm talking about it. We think that buys us some time. It doesn't really buy you time. You're just being more disobedient, and now you're just trying to justify by just talking about it. So we got to go past just talking about it. We've got to, to do it, right? Yes. You know, in Romans 2, 6, it says, God will repay, repay each person according to what they have done. Mm -hmm. Not what they've intended to do. Not what they've talked about doing. But he's going to repay each of us based on what we've done. You know, when we, when we, you know, are finished with this world and we go home to be with the Lord, there are rewards that we get in heaven. Those rewards are based on what you've done here. Not what you've talked about. <laughs> Not what you've in, intended to do. But what you've done. And see, we can't fall into this deception of, well, if I talk about it enough, then it's doing it. No. Talking about it doesn't mean you've done it. What means you've done it? Do you do it. it. <laughs> it's done. Right? See, the Bible states that you'll be judged by your actions. Not by your intentions, not by your convictions, not by your persuasions, but by what you do. Amen? Amen. You're going to be judged by what you do, right? What you don't do and what you do do <laughs> shows your heart, and actually it shows the priorities of your heart, mm -hmm. right? If, if you're not confessing the word and if you're not praying and if the only thing that you're doing is coming to church barely, that shows the true intentions of your heart. Right? And eventually it comes out. Because yes. out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. Right? <laughs> and so our priorities, our actions, actually, I'm going to say this, our actions show our true motives and the priorities that we have stated in our life. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. I, I can see that. I can see where your priorities are mm -hmm. in regards to church. Yep. When you're late all the time, and I'm not just talking church, but when you're late all the time, are those things a priority in your life? No. No. Because no. you just think, well, it'll be there when I get there. See, that's rude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And sometimes you can't even use work because a lot of people are late to work. Yeah. <laughs> I had a coworker once. I mean, she was kept getting late. They had to change her hours. <laughs> I was like, I was like, um, you know, you know, because if you have agreed to this work schedule, you need to work that work schedule, right? Yes. Unless you request vacation time, right? Yes. And there's some people that just they get to work when they get to work. They take off when they want to take off. Sometimes they don't even call. And that's why they don't have a job. Yes. <laughs> or keep jobs very much. They show that their priority isn't in their job. It's someplace else. Mm -hmm. It's in their bed. Sleeping. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. All right? Hallelujah. And one of the things that I really want to point out here is that we don't serve an unfair God. Yeah. We serve a fair and a just God. And he's going to judge you based on the revelation that you have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? What you have seen. Mm -hmm. Right? What you've heard. He's not going to judge you on, you know, what other people have done or what your spouse has done. There, There's... You know, we come and we hear the word, and there's revelation that God has given to each and every one of you. Yes. Some of it might be the same. Some of it might be different. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to judge you based on the revelation that you have, what he has told you to do. And he's told each and every one of you to do something. Yep. Some of it is the same, like we should all be doing our love confessions. Amen. Right? Amen. <laughs> you know? All right. Okay, so all of us, whether we're doing that or not, I don't know, that's between you and the Lord. Right? And so he's going to judge us based on the revelation or the light, what we have seen. Right? Normally, when we get revelation, what do we say? Oh, I see that. Oh, okay, I see that. I get that. Yeah. All right. That's revelation. That's revelation that you see. But we've got to do more than just, wow. Look at, yeah, I see this. I got this. We've got to do what we've actually seen, right? And this is important because if you don't walk in the light that you have, you won't get more. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Okay. Amen. We say that again. If you do not walk in the revelation and the light that you have, you won't get more, and you'll be a frustrated Christian. Oh, yes. You will be very frustrated, yeah. right? Because if you don't walk in the revelation or in the light, then you will have deceived yourself, okay? Because we know it doesn't make us a doer of it. And that's the other deception that, you know, we can fall into. And we've already talked about two. We've talked about just hearing. We think just hearing it, oh, that's good enough, I'm doing it. No, you're not. You're just hearing it. We've talked about just talking about it. No, that doesn't mean that you're a doer until you've actually done it. But this is the other side. This is another point is because we know it, we think we do it. Mm -hmm. Or we've done it. And that's not true. Mm -hmm. Just because you know it, doesn't mean you're doing it. And we see that. We see that across the body of Christ. We see yeah. that. You know, people will come and they'll say, I've got this problem. And, you know, the pastor will say, well, th these are the scriptures. And th I know, I know those scriptures. <laughs> I know those scriptures. But are you doing them? That's right. Amen. Are you doing what the scripture is telling you? Are you doing what God has told you to do? And we think knowing it is just as good as doing it, and it's not. Knowing something and doing something are two separate things, right? Yep. Yep. Very two separate things, right? It's not what you know, it's what you do. Yep. What are you doing with the information that you know? Are you walking in it or are you not? That's right. And you know what? You can fool other people into what you want them to know or think that what well, this is what I this is all that I know but God knows what you know <laughs> God knows what you know and you cannot fool him and he will judge you based on what you know mm -hmm. 
not based on anybody else, but what you know, all right? And so who are the people that get results? The doers. doers. The doers. The doers is what gets results. And I really believe that this is an answer for some people because this answers the question, why isn't it working? Yeah. How many of you have asked that question? Amen. Why isn't this working? Why aren't I getting results? What are you doing? What are you doing? That's right. Because if I ask you guys, if I dig a little deeper, just to be honest, there isn't a lot of consistent praying. There isn't a lot of speaking the word. There isn't a lot of actually doing and walking in love. How many times have we talked about love in this church? A lot. A lot. Like, a lot. Yes. A lot. And yet people still are not walking in love. Still having attitude towards one another. Still yelling and screaming. Still having a tone. I mean, that's like Christianity 101. That's baby stuff. We should be far removed from that. It should be pretty rare where it's like, and then immediate to stop and repent. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm sorry, I have a tone. Let's, let's come back to this conversation because I need a little Jesus time. <laughs> you know? You know? And so just because we know it doesn't mean that we're doing it. What means that we're doing it? Doing You're doing, doing it, it. Yeah. right? You're doing it. I mean, this is not really trick questions, but see how that deception comes in? Mm -hmm. We think because we've heard it, oh, yeah, I'm a doer. No, you're not. You just heard it. Mm -hmm. We think because I talked about it. Yeah, I'm a doer. No, you just talked about it. Mm -hmm. But what are you really doing? And this is where we need to kind of take a look at ourselves in the mirror. Yes. In the mirror. Amen. In the word of God. Are we doing what God has asked us to do? Are we doing what he has told us to do? The Lord has said many different things here in this church. One of those things that I remember is make your bed. <laughs> that was a command from the Lord. That wasn't from pastor. That was a command from the Lord. The Lord said make your bed. Because if you don't make your bed, how are your kids going to make their beds? Because yeah. you are undermining your authority. Because it can't be just do what I say and not what I do. It can't be that. Because what if God did that? You have to honor your word. And so if you expect them to clean their room, whose room needs to be cleaned first? Our room. Yeah, our room. Some of you still aren't making your bed. Holy Spirit's telling on you. I don't have to go to your house to know that. <laughs> Some of you still aren't making your bed. Some of you still aren't really cleaning. And some of you, it's taken years, years. That should have been, as soon as God said it, that is so simple to do. Right? right. Yes. Yes. Make your bed, keep your room clean. Yep. That is the most simplest thing, and yet people struggled. People struggled with it. It's like, really? It takes me like 30, literally 30 seconds to make my bed. Because I make it as soon as I get out. As soon as I, and you could try and justify, well, we've got this and we've got that, but what did God say? Make the bed. He said make the bed. So either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Just because you know that you need to do it doesn't mean you've done it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Just like confessions. What's the one confession that God has said that we need to do other than the love scriptures? What's the one confession that the Lord has said that people need to do? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And? Lean not unto your own understanding. And then what? Acknowledge him in all our ways. He will direct our paths. Mm -hmm. And how many are doing that daily? And see, it can't be like, well, well you know, I mean, Thursday was good. But he said to do that every day. And not only that, but he said, if you put your name in it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And see, if we are not doing it, then are we being a doer of the word? Not at all. No, you're just being a hearer. And because we haven't done it, mm -hmm. then what happens? Not getting results. You deceive yourself. Yeah. Thinking that you've done it and that why aren't I getting results? 
because you haven't done the word of the Lord. You haven't done what he's told you to do. And see, this is why we have to kind of go home, sit down, and go, Lord, what are all the things that you have asked me to do? And am I really doing them? Because there's some things that God's going to ask you to do daily. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. He's going to ask you, but are you doing those daily? And see, if we're not doing those daily, could that be the reason why we're frustrated? Yep. Yep. It's really simple. And yet a lot of times we blame God. Well, that's God's fault. God just has favorites. Does God have favorites? No. 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 He's not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. No, he favors faith. Yep. He favors doing. Yep. Because, see, if you do it, let me tell you this. If you do this, then you are releasing faith because faith is confidence and firm trust in him. Yep. So when God tells you to do something and takes that step of faith, and you take that step of faith, then you're releasing faith in that and saying, God, God I trust you. You said to do this, so I'm going to do it. And then you're going to see the results of it. That's right. And we saw that this morning with those testimonies. Yeah. A lot of it, you know, Savannah gave great testimony with her work. And she had a choice. She could take this promotion or not take this promotion. And God's saying, take the promotion. Well, the promotion, oh, you know, that looks like a lot more trouble. Maybe I don't really want to get into trouble. But see, God said to take it. Mm -hmm. So either she has the option to trust God, that when she gets into that position, He's going to help her, and it's going to be all right, or not, and stay comfortable. Yes, exactly. And not get more money. Mm -hmm. and God's trying to bless, bless us. Yeah, amen. And we look and we go, but that's going to hurt. That's going to make me uncomfortable. I don't know if I want to do that. But God says do it. Mm -hmm. See, she made the right decision. She did it. Amen. And then what happened? Things started working out. Yes. Kids started acting yeah. better. Favorite. Because she took that firm trust and not just became a hearer, now she's a doer of the word. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, that's what God wants to do in each and every one of us every time he speaks. Every time he speaks, we need to act on it. Do it. Amen? Amen. A lot of people just think, well, I go to this conference, and I go to these meetings, and I go listen to these webinars and all of this stuff, so I know all this information, but are you doing it? Yeah. Are you doing it? Because it doesn't matter how many conferences you go to. It doesn't matter how many years you've been in church. It <laughs> doesn't matter how many years you've been in church. Are you doing what you heard? Are you doing what you know to do? Let's turn over to Matthew 7. That is the right scripture. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew chapter 7. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Yeah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Good. See, this is going to help with that frustration. This is what's going to help with that, you know, bitterness and resentment of not getting prayers answered, not getting results. Because sometimes we have to take a hard look at ourselves and go, you know what? It is not all God's fault that I'm in this mess. It is not all God's fault that I'm feeling this way. What am I not doing? What has he told me to do that I'm not doing? Mm -hmm. You can't assume that everything is okay. you got to go and ask the Lord, Lord, am I being fully obedient mm -hmm. in every area of my life? And be open to that. Now, if he says, yeah, you're being fully obedient and you know that you're doing all of those things, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Then he'll reveal, it's just the devil trying to attack you. But sometimes the devil just comes and attacks you. But if this is, if, but if there's something, for some people, there's some things that you've been dealing with for years. Mm -hmm. For years. Why is it taking so long? Mm -hmm. Could it be that we're not being a doer of the word? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matthew 7, we're going to start at verse 20. 
Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. The NIV says, thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. What's fruit? What's another word for fruit? Growth. Action. Yes. Results. Results. Mm -hmm. It's growth. Results, though. Fruit is results. You're seeing results. We'll know them by their results, right? We'll know them by their fruit. Why? Because they're exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit. We, can, we will know them. We will know them because they're patient. We will know them because they're kind. We will know them because the joy of the Lord is in them. We will know them because they are disciplined. We will know them because of the goodness and meekness that they are exhibiting, that they are showing us. Right? We will know them. Okay? This is Jesus talking. Okay, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. Let's keep reading. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. That's the NIV. Away from me, you evil doers. See, we can see here that they did some good things, but the Lord didn't tell them to do some good things. He said to do what? The will of the Lord. And what's the will of the Lord? What he has told you to do. That's the will of the Lord. That's the will of the Lord. It's not just picking and choosing what good things that you want to do. It's doing what God has told you to do. You know, the Bible says that he that knows to do good and doesn't do it, that's sin. That's sin. And see, a lot of times we know what God is telling us to do. God is telling us, forgive that person. And we're like, that person doesn't deserve my forgiveness. You're not the judge. You're not the judge. See, if God's told you to do something, then what do we need to do? Do it. We need to do it. We need to do it. And so we can see here that it isn't just about good works. But here in this scripture, verse 21 says, But only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Wow. That, that puts obedience there on a higher level there. Right? All right. Let's keep reading verse 24. I'm still going to read it at the NIV. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, and the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Wow. We see there's, there's two people here in this scripture, right? We see the person that built the foundation, right? They built the foundation on rock. When you build a house, what's the very first thing that you need to do? The foundation, right? The foundation. You can't put anything else before the foundation is set on your house. That's foolishness, right? Mm -hmm. And yet we see this foolish person here starts building his house without a foundation. Why would he do that? Why would a person just start to build their house without a foundation? I'll answer that question for you. Because they think they have a foundation, but they don't. They're deceived into thinking they have a foundation. That's why they're building their house on sand, because they think they have a foundation, but they don't. 
they've deceived themselves. And see that we got to apply this. We apply this to the Christian life. Many people think they've had a foundation because they heard the word. They think they have a foundation because they they talked about it. They think they have a foundation because they know it. But what builds the foundation? What builds the foundation? What? Doing the word. Doing it. Doing the word builds the foundation. It's not just knowing about it. It's not just hearing about it. It's doing what you know. That's what builds that foundation. Are you getting this? Yeah. And see, the reason why we, you know, we think we've built a foundation is because we've deceived ourselves into thinking that, well, just listening to it, just hearing the word, and just talking about it, and just... Uh, you know, knowing it, that's the foundation. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because what does the scripture say? Did the doer, did his found it, did his house fall when the storm came? No. Whose house fell? The one that didn't have the foundation. And who was that? The hearer only, right? Let's go back. Let's read that again. Start at verse 21. But not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Let's stop here for a minute. A lot of people have not made Jesus Christ their Lord. He's, they have made them their Savior. But when you say, Lord, Lord, that means you are coming under his authority and you're going to do what he says. That's what it means to have him as Lord. He's Lord over your life. You are bending your knee to him, right? You're bending his knee, and you're going to do and obey what he says, right? And many people are saying, Lord, Lord, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because, see, they're just saying it. They're not really doing it. Just because you say Lord doesn't mean he's Lord. you got to actually do what he tells you to do. Amen? Amen? Yep. Amen. All right? So not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. The King James says, uh, away from me, you workers of iniquity. And see, you workers of iniquity, that is just, that's not like this huge list of sin, fornication and lust and all of that. No. What did I just say? Sin is doing what you know that is right to do and not doing it. It's violation of light. It's not doing the revelation that God has told you to do. That's sin. That's sin. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're going to get excited about this when you get home. <laughs> Amen. All right, verse 24, 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. All right, putting it into practice. What's a new other word for putting it into practice? Doing. 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 The doer of the word is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down. The streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Okay, this is not like, you know, just a little bit of rain. This is like hurricane winds, all right? Because it was violently beating on that house, right? This is like tsunami winds are coming, into, coming towards this house, okay? The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall. Because it had its foundation on the rock. All right? Now, a lot of people say, well, the rock, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Y yes and no. All right? Jesus is the word of God. You go to John chapter 1, verse 14, it says that Jesus was the word and the word was made flesh. All right? That is Jesus. He is the word. And so our foundation on the rock is what we do with the word. 
right? What we've allowed Jesus to do in our lives and how we have followed him and done what he has told us to do. That's that foundation. That's being a doer of the word. It's not just your belief in Jesus alone that gives you that foundation. That's step one. Right, your belief in Jesus is step one, but that doesn't give you that firm foundation. It's what you do with the word, all of it. That's right. Right, all of it that gives you that firm foundation. So when the storms of life come, you're not going to be shaken because the storms are coming. Mm -hmm. The storms are coming, right? Yep. A lot of people think, well, just because I'm a faith person, I'm a faith person, I believe in the scriptures. That doesn't mean much because the storms are coming. That doesn't mean that the storms aren't going to come. That just means you have the tools and you're equipped to deal with the storm. The, the Bible says that the devil's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's going to devour those that don't have this foundation. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. That's how, you know, let's keep reading. Let's see, verse 49. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent stuck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Look at that. Wow. The minute some opposition came, the minute some conflict came, the minute some prayer didn't get answered because the deadline that I wanted it to get answered in, they fall. Because their foundation wasn't in the word of God, but in a feeling. Now foundation wasn't, well, I go to a good church. I know some good people that know how to pray. I take a lot of notes a lot of notes in church yeah that's not your foundation mm -hmm. well I go to a lot of meetings I hear a lot of messages during the week I, that's not your foundation it's what are you doing with what you heard what are you doing with what you know that's your foundation your foundation is what word you've put into practice in your life because if you notice, the storm came to both of them, didn't it? Yep. It came to both of them. One withstood the storm, and the other did not. Yep. Who withstands the storm? The doer. The doer. The doer. The doer. Okay. Let's go over to... over to Luke. Well, put your finger on Luke first. Before, before we go over there, uh, I want to say some things because um, I want to make sure that we, we've got this. Right? Because many people are deceived into thinking that they have a foundation because of what they know. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, it's not about what you know. It's about what you've done mm -hmm. with what you know and what you are continuing to do. That is your foundation. And so as we listen, I want to talk a little bit about the process of, you know, when we listen to teachings, okay, or when we come to church as we listen, what needs to happen is this process of like self-evaluation, right? Because God's given out revelation. And the revelation he's giving out is stuff that, oh, I need to stop that. And I need to start doing this, okay? And this is why it's important that, you know, we write down what God is giving to us. We write down that revelation, and then we go back and read it again. And then we keep going back and reading it again, and we keep, and then we put it into practice until it's habit, Right? And so it's just part of us. That's just who we are and what we do. Right? But in the beginning, when we're not used to it and it's something new, when we know we got that light, this is what I need to do, we need to start moving in that direction and start doing it. 
right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, uh, you know, we, we start putting this into practice. Okay, this is what I need to start doing. This is what I need to stop doing. It isn't a complete, I need to stop doing this. I need to stop doing this. I need to stop doing this. What's your focus on? Stop doing this, right? Yeah. That's not what God wants you to focus on. That's not going to get you a doer of the word. And this is what frustrates people because they're so focused on, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. God's always going to have a substitute. He's always going to have the real thing for you to focus on. Mm -hmm. And so it is this, oh, I shouldn't do that anymore. That's not your focus now, right? It's acknowledging I shouldn't do this anymore. Now, this is what I need to do. When you're focused on what you need to do, that's what you're going to do. And this is what really trips up people because they're so focused on what they can do that they're not focused on what they can do. And whatever your focus is, that's what you're going to do. Okay? So when God brings that up and says, all right, you need to stop doing that. Okay, yeah, I do need to stop doing that. What do you want me to do instead? That's, that's the question. And God's going to answer that. This is what you need to do. This is what your, where your focus needs to be. And see, when you start focusing on that, then it's going to be easier to be a doer of the word. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, God wants us to take all that he has and start doing it. You know, we don't want to just be hearers. We don't want to just hear about praying. We want to start praying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, we don't want to just start, you know, listening about tithing. We want to start tithing. That's right. Okay? We don't want to just hear about faith. We want to start walking in faith. That's we don't right. want to just hear about love. We want to start walking in love. Amen. Because when we start walking in these things, we're going to get results. Amen. The word works when you work the word. That's right. Amen. That's something to get excited about. Amen. Because God has given out so much information he has so much revelation out there that he wants to get us to do it. That's right. But so many of us are just want something new. I just want something new. I just want something to kind of tickle my ears. I know all of that. Yeah, but are you doing it and are you getting the results? That's right. Because it isn't just about bless your foreign no more. That, because a lot of people stop there. Well, I'm in a good place. I'm in a good position. All my bills are paid. Well, that's great. But all your neighbor's bills paid? And what about the people down the street? That's right. And what about the other person that's like living in a different neighborhood? Yeah. And what about the people downtown? I mean, God wants us to be a blessing. Yeah. And so we can't just think about just our family. God wants us to be a doer of his word that not only... Are we able to do signs, wonders, and miracles? Amen? Because yeah. Jesus said that we could do the same works that he did and even greater. Right? So not only did he just do signs, wonders, and miracles for our physical bodies, but there were financial signs and wonders that he did. Yeah. Right? Y'all remember the, 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 the money in the fish's mouth? Yeah. You know, they came, the, <laughs> the taxpayer came yeah. and said, uh, you owe us some money, you got to pay your taxes. And Jesus didn't say, I don't owe taxes. <laughs> no, he said, give to Caesars what is Caesars. That's right. Peter, I think it was Peter. Peter. He said, yeah, he said, Peter, he said, Peter, go fishing. And in the mouth, there's going to be some money, pay your taxes. You pay mine and yours. That's right. Wow. Come on now. You think, what? There's money in a fish. Yeah, there was money in fish in that mouth. That's right. He took that out and it was more than enough. To pay all of that. See, God doesn't want us to just hear about faith. He wants us to start walking in faith. Mm -hmm. So that we can be a blessing for others. Amen? Amen? But you can't quit. That's right. You can't quit because just because you spoke it out a couple of times last week. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They're like, hello. Okay, so you said it twice last week. Whoopee. No, you've got to be a doer of that word. You got to put it in your remember before you so you can remember it so that when the storms come, 
right? Yep. When the storms come and the more bills come in than your paycheck, you know that God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Yeah. That I lend and do not borrow, that my bank right. account is full and overflowing, That's that right. God is my source, Ooh. and I call that money in instead of going out desperately looking for money. You call it in That's right. in the name of Jesus. You call your healing in in the name of Jesus. You call that love in That's in the right. name of That's Jesus, right. and you start walking in it. So many yeah. people are waiting for everybody else to do it. Well, if they start to change, then I will. No, you're the problem. You change. Right. Quit blaming your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your, your cousin, your teacher, your first grade teacher, third grade teacher, all these teachers. They cannot stop you. That's right. You are a child of the Most High God. Woo! But you've yeah, got to do what God tells you to do. Amen. You've got to be a doer of that word. That's you got to right. get excited about this is a word of freedom. Yeah. Yeah. This is a word of freedom because... The many of you said, yeah, I'm frustrated. Yeah, you know, prayers aren't getting answered. What are you doing? That's right. What are you doing? And if the answer is nothing, that's the problem. <laughs> Praise God. But I can change that. That's right. I can start being a doer of the word today. That's right. Say it with me. Let's say this. Let's call these things Woo. that be not as though yep. they are. Yep. Amen. Yep. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I, by grace... And by grace, by God's grace, and by God's mercy, I am a doer of His word. I am a doer of His word. I am not just a hearer only. I am not just a hearer only. But the word that I hear, but the word that I hear, I choose to put it into practice. I choose to put it into practice. Because I'm a doer of the word. Because I'm a doer of the word. And I no longer will deceive myself. And I no longer will deceive myself. But I will be a doer of the word. I will be a doer of the word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So now let's go over to Luke chapter 19. This is my conclusion. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Luke 19. Luke 19. Now this is um, the parable of the king and um, the talents. I think this one has pounds. It says pounds. And, um, you know, so there was, there's three of them. And the king, he gave out according to their abilities. Right? Okay? And so... He said, um, let's start at verse 20. All right, we're kind of coming to the end. I don't want to read the whole thing. It says, and another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Verse 21. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest, down, layest not down, and reapest that, that thou didst not sow. Verse 21, and he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Now, really pay attention to these next two words. Thou knewest that I was an austere man. He knew. Who called him an austere man? He did. The servant, right? Yeah. Okay, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. So, out of his own mouth, he's going to be judged. And he knew. He said, you are an austere man. And I knew that. Okay? Yeah. And so, because of what he knew, this king is going to judge him. Yes. Right? Because of what he knew and what he didn't do. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Now, let's keep reading. Thou take... Um, hold on. I'm at scripture. Hold on. 
Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore, then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury, with interest, right? Mm -hmm. And so this servant, okay, this servant knew that his master, the king, expected multiplication. Mm -hmm. He knew that. But he still didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, it's not what you know, mm -hmm. but it's what you do. Yeah, exactly. Even though he knew that his master expected multiplication, he still decided not to do anything with it. He put it in a napkin, put it on the ground, and he waited for the master to come back. Mm -hmm. And the master called him what? A wicked servant. Yep. Right? Hearing and not doing, you're wicked. Wow. <laughs> God judges based on what we know and do not do, right? And like I said before, you can try and hide what you know and try and play ignorant with other people, but God knows. God knows. Yep. And so if you're still not getting the blessings, if you're still feeling frustrated, it's because you're not doing what God has told you to do. Right. And you can try and justify, well, I, but I did that and it didn't work. No, you didn't do it. You tried it. Mm -hmm. And trying is not doing. Trying is not doing. You've got to be consistent and you've got to do it every day. Amen. Yes. Every day until Jesus comes home. Amen. Or until he tells you otherwise. Yes. And this is why it's so important that we get to know the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who is helping us. He is our guide. He is our teacher. He is our comforter. And so he is here to help us. We're not on our own. It's not like God's just spitting out commands and we just got to do it. No, he's speak when God speaks to you, okay, when God gives you a command, he's actually speaking to your spirit. And he's calling forth that spirit to come up, come forth, and do what he's asked you to do. And because he's talking to your spirit, he's talking to the Holy Spirit also with the, on the inside of you so that you can have a partner and help to do what he's asked you to do. Amen. You're not alone. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You're not alone. I know I used to do this when I had to leave service. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to leave service. And I'm like, oh. And I didn't lean on the Holy Spirit. And, and then I was just guessing what to do. And it wasn't until I got the revelation, oh, wait a minute. It's the Holy Spirit on the inside of me that's called to lead service, not me. Amen. Oh, Lord, what do you want to do? And then it was like, I want you to do this. And then all of a sudden, the guessing stopped. And I was just like, all right, Lord says to start with confessions. And then the pastor was like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yep, yeah, that's right. Wait a minute, you mean I was wasting all of this time, stressing out, and all uh, freaking out in the car, trying to deliver myself and all this stuff, when all I had to do was just ask the Lord? Really? See, we make it so complicated. We really make it more complicated on ourselves than it really needs to be. God is here to help us be that doer. It's just following him. He's going to give you the commands. He's going to tell you what you need to do. And not only that, he's going to help you do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen? Amen. Right? So we've got to stop all the talking. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. There's too much talking and not enough doing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen? Stop talking about it. Stop talking about how it didn't work for you in the past and just start doing it. Amen. It will work. It will work because how can it work for some and not others? Why is that? Let's answer that question right now. Why does it work for others and not other people and some? For some and not others. They're not doing. They're just hearing. And I know that might be sobering and that might be kind of mean, but it's truth. It's truth because it's like God is not a respecter of persons. So what's the difference here? And we saw that with the two people in the houses. 
One built their house on a foundation and one did not. But the storm came to both of them, right? Yeah. And who stood? The doer. The doer. The doer. Yeah. The doer, the one who did, who actually created that foundation. And see, this is what happens. When you start to do the word, you are building your foundation. Yep. It's going down deep. Woo. You're building those pillars. Amen. Amen. Oh, when I had to do my, um, when I moved into my house, we had to, I wanted to have a um, covering for the back patio. <coughs> Now the covering for the back patio that was there was metal and it was rusted and it needed to come down. So, um, and so by the city I was required to like replace it. Well, my dad came and the first time, and so he said, well, you know, we can use this stuff here. And um, he did something on the top of it but it really wasn't secure. And I had gotten these metal sheets for the, for the roof, right? And he just used like four by four and just kind of like put it from the house to the, the two um, metal poles, really. <laughs> but they were kind of like ladders, you know, but they were metal, uh, but not very secure. They were not anchored to anything. It was kind of, they were anchored to the patio well, when it snowed the first time, mm -hmm. the weight of the snow mm -hmm. was so heavy that the roof bowed in. Mm -hmm. I thought that thing was going to, I was freaking, I was pleading the blood of Jesus because mm -hmm. I thought it was going to bust. <laughs> and so I kind of <laughs> had some other wood and I kind of put it in the middle of where the, the big bowl was. And because it wasn't just snow, it was like ice and snow and, you know, <laughs> so you see like outside my door, you just see the ceiling just kind of come in like that. And then like, oh <laughs> it's just God. like, oh my God. <laughs> and so he used to say that needed to come down. That wasn't safe. <laughs> and so I had to submit plans to the city of Florissant. And I was like, all right. Because I said, Dad, it's not working. He's like, all right, I'll come down and I'll do it. So I needed to submit plans. Well, my plans were to bolt new um, pillars to the actual patio, cement. And when I went there, and I, I was really proud of myself. I did the drawing and all of that. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, he said, no, this isn't going to work. He's like, you need to put pillar cement mm -hmm. down deep at least six to eight feet mm -hmm. next to the slab of the patio. I said, like, oh, okay. <laughs> and he said, and you need not just two, but you need to do three of them. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And so he's just telling me exactly what I needed to do. So my dad came in and he got these round um, cardboard cylinders that you use to, you know, put cement in. And he dug out the holes like eight feet down, put that in there, mixed the cement, did it. He's like, this thing ain't coming down. <laughs> like, like, you know, he did that. He put a rod in the middle of the cement, okay, because he was using, he didn't want to put the wood right on the cement because that's gonna rot. Yeah. So he put a, a metal bracket there to hold the base of the wood, right? <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying this all right, technical terms, yeah, but right. you get the picture. <coughs> so that the rain, so the wood wouldn't sit in the rain and rot, mm -hmm. right? It'll just kind of go down. And we painted it and everything, and then the roof had like four, uh, two by eight thick. Right, coming down from the bolted to the house and then coming down there were like two four by fours over the three um, pillars there this could be its own my dad was building like a, a, an addition to the house <laughs> the way it was we could have put walls in this thing but I'll tell you what We've had some storms. We had a tornado about a mile away from my house. That thing has not budged one Amen. bit Amen. because it's got a foundation Amen. and it ain't going to move. Amen. 
that thing has so many nails in it. It is so. <laughs> that thing is set. And see, this is what God wants to do for you. I don't even hear, when storms come, I don't hear any rattling in my house. And that's how God wants you to be. Amen. He wants your foundation so Woo. firm that when the storms of life come, Amen. you are on the inside and you don't even feel the shaking. Amen. Okay? Woo. He wants Amen. you so firm in your foundation you, because Lord. you've yeah. done what he has told Woo. you to do yes. that when the storms come, you, you go, is it raining outside? <laughs> what? Oh, Woo. we're okay. That's It'll right. be all right. It will pass. That's right. See, Woo. because the storms of life are going to come. Yep. But right. what are you doing with those storms? Are you on the inside or near the window going, oh, my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? He's shaking. It's really loud out there. <gasps> are you screaming? Or are you just like, oh, it's a storm. <laughs> we're cool. We're good. Amen. Amen. That's right. See, if your house is not firm and if your foundation is not firm, that means your house is not firm. And when the storms come, it will rattle and it will shake. Yeah. Has anybody ever been in an old house? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. When an old house and the storm is really coming, yeah. woo, you yeah. feel like that thing is going to topple over you. Mm -hmm. But see, when your foundation is in Jesus come on. and that storms of life are going to come, fear is going to come, doubt is going to come. Right? Things are going to change. And things are going to happen that you're not going to expect. But because your foundation has been built on the rock, and that rock is because you have done what God has asked you to do. Come on. Right? He's asked you to do that. You will not be shaken. Amen, Mom. You will know to keep going, to keep moving ahead. When Pastor Paul died, that was not expected. That was huge. That should have closed this church down. But we are still here. Amen. Woo! Because our yep. foundation was not built on him. Yep. It was built on Jesus Christ. Yep. And it was built on yep. being a doer of the word. Amen. It was be right. being right. built on Woo! following the Holy Spirit. Right. And see, Woo! when your foundation is following the Holy Spirit, you can't quit. Amen. Amen. You can't quit because the Holy Spirit will tell you, you got to keep going. Yeah. You got to keep going. Right. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. Woo! And that's what the Lord told told me, no, you pick up the vision and you keep going. That's right. Wow. You do what I have told this church to do. Amen. Because what God has told the church isn't just for one person. That's Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's Amen. Right. Amen. All be in Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How, that's why we're still standing here today. Amen. That's right. That's right. Because we're a doing church. Amen. Amen. But how many of us can do a little more? Yeah. A little more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God said, let's do a little more. That's right. right. And then the next day, let's do a little bit more. And then the next day, let's do a little bit more. Let's do a little bit more. Because this is where our blessings are. If we're wondering, where are the blessings, God? Where are the blessings? Where are the blessings? It's just a little trickle. No. God has said that 2018 is, uh, is the year of an yeah. open heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That means that all the faucets are open to the fullest. Yeah. It's just yeah. pouring down. Woo. I mean, yeah. think of the greatest water that you yes, can think yes. of and just that water falling down yes. I mean you can't even Woo. contain it that's right <laughs> I take it you cannot contain it man no you've got to do what God has told you to do man stop letting fear and doubt and unbelief hinder your blessings Amen. and hinder who you are in Christ. That's God right. is not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, Woo. love, and a sound mind. You yes. start acting like you've got power. Right. You start Woo. doing like you've got power. That's right. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. glory. That's right. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. Yes, Lord. God has called Help us me. to be doers. That's right. Not just hearers only. That's right. Thank you. Lord. You can't change the word of the Lord. If he has told you to do something, he changes not. That's right. So if you're trying to wait until he changes, he ain't changing. <laughs> Trust me. Right. I know. I know. He might have some <coughs> grace and mercy, and he might tell you, okay, well, if you don't want to do that, you'll do this. But let me tell you something. That word that he said is going to come back. Yeah. So just be like, all right, now. Back to this. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? If you did... 
what God told you to do, then you're going to be ready for that. Amen. That's right. That's right. And see, God, God, he has equipped you. He is equipping you. Yeah. He's equipping you, but the only way you're going to use that equipment is doing. That's right. You've got to do what God is asking you to do. And many of you come and you ask, well, what's the Lord giving to you? And I give you, I give you the instructions of the Lord. And if I don't know, I tell you I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know? But a lot of times he gives you specific instructions. And some of you decide to do half. Uh-huh. Well, are you going to get the results with just doing half? No. no. You're not. And then it's not going to work out. Mm-hmm. We, we've got to get over ourselves. And we gotta get over. Well, I just don't really want to do it that way. Well, but that's God's asking mm-hmm. and saying to do it this way. So if you wanted to just, you know, be done with it, just do what God is asking you to do. <clears throat> We've got to be doers and not just hearers only, deceiving your own self. That's right. And see, if we haven't been doers up until this point, there's an easy fix. Really easy. Repent. Just say, Lord, you know what? I am sorry, and I apologize for not for disobeying what you have told me to do. And I am going to change my mind right now. And instead of being a hearer only, I'm going to do what you've told me to do. And then you take it, and you do it. That's right. Just start doing what he's told you to do. It's that simple. And I'll guarantee you it's not as bad as you think. Because a lot of times we think, oh, God wants me to do this, and you want me to do that. And you know, it's like, oh, that's it? I mean, with the love confession, how easy is it? Just confess the love scriptures. Yeah. Just confess the love scriptures. That's all. Just confess the love scriptures. It's like a minute and 30 seconds out of your life. You know? If you do them once every day. I know, I timed it. A minute, 30, 35 seconds. Right? Just depending on how fast you read it, you know, you just do it. He's just asking you to do that. And then when you get into the situations, like Steve was in the situation, then all of a sudden, because he brought that to his, he was bringing those love scriptures to his remembrance every day, the Holy Spirit was able to come up and go, stop arguing with that man. You're in a different place than him. You shut up and you humble yourself. Mm, yeah. Paraphrasing. <laughs> Thank God was a lot nicer than him. Yeah. Than me. <laughs> you know? That's what God's asking us to do. Bring it to your remembrance. Because if you don't remember it, you're not going to do it. That's right. Right? That's right. So be a doer of the word. Choose this day that you're going to be more of a doer. Yep. And not just a hearer only. Amen. Write down what the Lord has given to you or record it so that you can bring it back to your remembrance. I know that's something i got to work on. Because God tells me some really great things, and I go, oh, okay, I won't forget that. Mm-hmm. I forgot it. Yeah, it I'm like, man. <laughs> man. But, you know, God is so good. He'll give it back to you. He will give it back to you. But we've got to start putting more effort into it. Amen. We've got to start putting more effort into bringing things to our remembrance, writing them down. Not just hearing it, but then also hearing and doing what we heard. Not just talking about it, but doing what we're talking about. And not just thinking that, well, I know it, and that's good enough. No, doing what we know to do. I guarantee you, you start doing all of that, you're going to get more results in your life. Mm -hmm. Every day. You got to be consistent. Be consistent every day. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.